it's another day in the Maker Advent, but it's not another day and it's not another Maker Advent. It's a special Maker Advent because we got a special piece of kit. This was sent to me for review on Tom's Hardware. Now, as a full review on Tom's Hardware, me tearing this apart, looking inside, telling you all the details of it. So go there, have a read. It's good. It took me a long time to write that. I'm talking a day and a half of taking stuff apart, seeing how it works, and then debugging it against a real Commodore 64. But absolute great fun. So this is the Commodore 64 Ultimate from Commodore International. Yes, 30 years later, there's another Commodore 64 to play with. It's an FPGA, a field programmable gate array. So it's not a real MOS 6510 CPU. It's an FPGA recreation, but it just works. And what do I mean by just works? Is it an emulator? No, it's not. It thinks it's a Commodore. It acts like a Commodore. It works with Commodore hardware. I've tested this with a SD to IEC, which is a micro SD card version of the 1541 floppy drive, a Tapuino, which is a tape data set emulator. I've tested it with cartridges. It just works. It's a Commodore 64, but it's 21st century version. So I'm going to show you how it all works as well, but I'm going to show you something really cool to start with. And I like this. This is the Starlight version. Translucent case, translucent PCB as well for the keyboard. There are RGB LEDs inside and it's going to light up. So let's make it light up. If I press the power button in the up position, look at that. That is glorious. Keys are translucent, case is translucent. Beautiful. So that's the case let's get it hooked up to the capture let's look at what you can do and yes you can type in basic programs with it yay anyway one moment please okay so this is familiar to a lot of people if you grew up in the 80s you may have had a commodore you may have had a spectrum you may have had an amstrad a dragon an auric whatever you had hope you enjoyed it this is for me is my childhood this is commodore 64 and this is the commodore 64 ultimate with direct hdmi video capture through my video capture setup so you get to hear the audio from the virtual sid chips and direct video there's no jail bars no awful fuzzy lines it's just there ready to go and i can write code here there we go 10 print yeah you know where this is going don't you hello world 20 go to 10 and then we can run it there we go and i can press run stop i can list it it's, it's the whole shebang you can write it in basic on a normal c64 you can write it on this one because it is a normal c64 the fpga believes it is a normal c64 but that's not else because if i press power button upwards again we get the commodore 64 ultimate menu and here we have all these options. So we've got a disk file browser. So if I get a disk now and pop it in, disks are, hold it up to the camera so you can see it. This comes with it. This is a cassette tape, but it's not a cassette tape. It's actually a USB stick. How cool is that? And this has got some demos on that you can play around with and have fun with. So I'll put that in now. So one moment. Okay, so that's been plugged in. So now when I click on or press the button on the disk file browser, USB 1, USB disk is ready, press return, press return, and here are all the demos and games and what have you I can play around with. So if I scroll down to demos, enter, and we will get, let's see, Bad Apple 64, and we'll open Bad Apple 64.d64, so a 1541 disk image. I'll press enter, I'll press run disk, and it'll start running the disk. So it's going to start loading the disk. This is just an emulated disk drive of 1541. So load star comma eight comma one. And it'll start loading up the game. Sorry, loading up the demo, I should say. It's not a game. And Bad Apple will start playing in a second, hopefully. And I won't run out of stuff to say before it gets there. Because that'd be just embarrassing, really, wouldn't it? But I've done a full review of this on Tom's hardware and you should go and have a look at that because I have literally, no, not literally, I really have taken it to pieces. I'm not joking. The motherboard came out, the LED, the RGB LED light rig came out as well. And I've been examining the disk drive. And 
it's a well put together piece of kit. The PCB is fantastic. Build quality is fantastic. I only have one little criticism of the, the keyboard on the Starlight version. It feels slightly squishy compared to the beige. Now I'm lucky I've got both units. So I can compare both of them. And on the Starlight, it seems softer, especially when pressing the keys in the middle, like the F, G, H, J, that sort of thing. This feels a bit softer. But I can still type pretty well on it. No problems there. So here's Bad Apple running on the Commodore 64 Ultimate. And it's running pretty well. Now I can't hear the audio, it's been captured directly into OBS. I can't have that blaring out at me when I'm actually talking to you, otherwise it'll overpower the mic. But I can see on the meter that the HDMI channel I'm using for the capture, I can see audio on there. So that should be fine and dandy. You'll also occasionally hear disk drive noises. Now there's no real disk drive. That's a speaker on the PCB emulating disk drive noise. It also does tapes as well. There we go. So if I press the power up button again, there we go. And I can just come out of this, uh, come out of this again. And there are BBS. So if I go to ultimate turn, so BBS, bulletin boards, the precursor to the internet as most of us know it. Press run me first, configuration's been started, and we'll start the disk image for D64 image or ultimate term, T64, the BBS client. So not only have we got games on USB, we've got access to a BBS, we have access to many BBS with this. Wi-Fi's handle variant ESP32 built into the board. There's also Ethernet as well. Two USB ports two normal game ports and it works with Commodore data sets, disk drives, emulated ones as well so Tapwino and the SD to IEC no problem, works with cartridges, works with joysticks because I use my cart my joystick really can't get my words out tonight there we go that's what I made five years ago I've got all the pictures and all the video of it I never released it as a video I just sort of did it that's that project. In fact, I might put that as a Maker Advent project this year. Because it was good fun. It's really simple how to do it, but good fun. Right. So, yeah, you get in the box that cassette tape I just showed you. There you go. I love the little cassette. You get the user's guide. Remember these back in the day? Old man shouts at Cloud. Showing you how to program. Brilliant. Also how to set up this and use the extra functions. I had to read quite a lot of this very quickly to understand how to use this. We're on the BBS. If I go to Retro Campus, I've been using that for my tests. Now I'm connected to Wi-Fi with this Commodore 64 Ultimate and I can see now I can go to different sections. I'm going to go to News, so that's number one. Uh, I'm going to go to, let's see, Hacker Day, so that's B. There we go. So Top Story, 3D Printing and Metal Casting are a great match. And we can go into Stories and have a read. So let's see, Tearing Down Walmart's £12, sorry, $12 keychain camera. I really can't talk tonight, can I? I mean, I have been up since 6 o'clock this morning working. And you can read the articles on Hackaday, on CNN, BBC. We can exit out of there. We can exit out of this one. And we'll exit out of there and we'll go and play games. That's number three. We'll play tic-tac-toe. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go for B2, which is a classic move. B2. Uh, let's see, so circle can either go down or across. So I'm going to go for A3. So they're going to go for C1, probably. Yeah, so let's go for B1. Okay, there. I think we've got stalemate already. One of us is going to go for one, they want to go for the other. So let's go for A2. The winning move is not to play. There we go, we can exit out of there. And that's us doing BBS stuff with this. Let's go back and have a look at some other stuff. So we've got games to play. We can do NTSC and PAL, that's no problem there. I'm quite liking Starstorm at the moment. There we go. Uh, let's run the disk. So I've also tested this, as I keep saying, with old fashioned peripherals. 
And Tap Wino um, simulates the cassette tape, the data set it was called back in the day. And I had that running with the Empire Strikes Back and it would take about four minutes to load, but it loaded every time. And it also tested the Tap Wino, which I bought years ago and I never used. Yeah, I know, but I should use it. Tested loading the game for me now. I've plugged in the joystick. That was why I had a bit of a heavy breathing there as I went and got over the uh, joystick and brought it over. So while it's doing this, let's talk price. It's $300 for the beige and $350 for Starlight, which is what I've got here. Is it worth the money? Well, on Tom's Hardware, I show you and break down the cost of buying a Commodore 64 second hand and also the bits you're gonna need to replicate what's in here. So Wi-Fi modem, uh, tap we know, SD to IEC, a new power supply. Now people are gonna go, whoa, wait, hang on, it's not need a new power supply, it comes with it. It's 40 year old electronics. If you're confident to fix it, go for it. Save yourself some money there. But Commodore power supplies have a history of going bang and sending too much voltage into the boards and it kills Commodores. It's bad. So I would just, get, if you're gonna get an old uh, Commodore 64, get a brand new power supply. It's what I did, I spent about 30 or 40 quid to get it. Or just do what we have now. Buy one of these for about $300. You don't need the Starlight one, really. It's pretty. It look, it's the one I like, but the beige one is equally as pretty. It, it's a Commodore of the era. It looks great. Anyway, it's a bit of uh, stalling there. So let's play the game. So, watch me fail magically on this as I try and talk. Hey, look, Ma, I'm a streamer. You can't destroy the snowflake things. They're like, they can destroy you, though. Cheers, mate. Got him. Didn't even have a chance to react, did he? He just came out of nowhere. Oh, he's gonna try and get ah, yes, why? Corner trap myself. Classic move, Les. Normally better than this. I like this because the graphics remind me of Star Wars on the arcade, but it's not Star Wars, is it? It's top down shooter. And I failed again, so that's game over for me. Score 1700. Mm. That's not too bad though. So I'll just press the button again to go back. And I'm just gonna go back to the menu. And yeah, we've got lots of cool stuff to play with. We've got SID tunes to listen to. But wait, there's more. Let's go back to the main menu. You'll see Como Surf File Search. Go into there. And this is basically, you know, a Google of sorts in this. So you want to look for some Commodore contents. Let's go from events. Now I like the revision event which happens every year in Germany and it's a big old school hacker conference where they all talk about hacking old computers making them do weird things there's a big contingent of Commodore hackers there for Commodore 64 Amiga it's awesome big demo scene and I love watching it every year it's on for like three days in a row and I just sit and watch it for three days in a row so I'm just going to search for revision and these are all demos from that event so if I want to go and watch something so let's see um We'll have Vulcan Salute, that's a tribute to Spock, Leonard Nimoy, who passed away. Is it a decade ago now? I think it's 2015 he died. And we should see and hear the tribute to Leonard Nimoy pop up in a moment. All done on a Commodore 64 using one of the virtual SIDs. So I mentioned virtual SIDs. There's a chip inside that's emulating these SID chips. You can tinker it how you want to get the best possible sound of all the different SID chips. You can have multiple SID chips, but there's also two sockets directly on the board where you can put your own SID chip in. So I did. I took out the SID chip as 6580 from my Commodore 64, put it in, and it worked. And I was I was amazed that I got it out in one piece and it didn't break it because it's quite delicate. But it just worked. Even the machine detected the SID chip going in, it went, oh yeah, you put a SID chip in, all right, it's a 6580, no problem, I'll configure myself. Didn't have to do anything. It was absolutely brilliant. So I can't fault it. So I've got a full review, as I've said multiple times on Tom's hardware. Go and take a look. I'll put a link down below. It's a great piece of kit. If you're just starting out with Commodores, it's, it's a lot of money to spend out in one go, but you're done. You've got 
Wi-Fi connectivity, you've got access for disk drives and tape drives because it just plays the games automatically. D64 and tap files, disk files, a lot. Just plays it. It's great. If you want to start coding in BASIC, you can. You can load different versions of BASIC. You don't have to use just Commodore. You can use Simon's BASIC, which is pretty much the best. You can learn other languages with it. You can make your own games. You can port those games from this machine into Vice or Quanto's uh, 64 Forever. You can just save them as D64 files to a, a USB drive and take them across. I've done that as a test. I wrote some code in it, a conditional test on the Commodore 64 and then took it into Quanto 60, uh, C64 Forever, put it on, done. Easy and vice versa. I could take the disc back over and use it there. So yeah, a lot of money to spend, but if you're just starting out with Commodore stuff and you want to get the best, this is it. You can play all your games, you get up to 16 meg of RAM as well. All configurable via the menu. If I go back to the menu now, and just go back to that section, memory and ROMs. There you go, RAM expansion unit, enabled, 16 meg. If you want to give it a turbo boost, go see, yeah, I'm going to say Amiga. It was C64 in PAL regions was about 0.98 megahertz, and in NTSC it was about 1.03, I think. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Please do. So if I set turbo to manual, I can go to 64 megahertz. Completely possible. Hello. That's all then for this episode. It's a bit of a special one. It's a bit longer than normal. Looking at the counter in OBS right now, it's up to 18 minutes, and I've got the bit from the camera before when I was over there showing it all glowing. So it's going to be about a 20 minute video this. That could be a bit too long. To the editing room. Anyway, that's all for now. See you tomorrow. Ta-da.